deep, 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 deep. We forgot how to do it. We yeah. forgot how to podcast. You're selling your home. It's like writing a podcast. <laughs> That's like writing a <laughs> podcast. You just get right back on. You just hop back on that podcast <laughs> and I can tame it. Tame it. hey yeah hey yeah Settle down there, podcast. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> just got to break a podcast. I'm just breaking in a podcast here. The biggest news since we haven't been together is that you're selling your house. That is the biggest <laughs> news. <laughs> you're selling yes, your house. Yes, in terms of newsworthy events, that's one. And um, do you think that it's now hard to be a realtor? Well, I used to should I used to make I used to make fun of realtors. Yeah. And it but it is I'm you know, it is a little well, I mean, the thing is you can get screwed as a realtor, right? Because yeah. people are fucked. Mm-hmm. So they're like, I want to sell this for seven hundred and twelve thousand. And then you're like, uh, but if you're desperate as a like being a desperate, there's no worse job in the world than being a desperate realtor. Yeah. Because some asshole like you can't find any normal people. It's only <laughs> crazy people that are using you. So they're like, I want to sell this for a million point two. <laughs> and then you look at it and it's a cardboard box and you're like, <laughs> I'm your man. I'm absolutely desperate to sell homes. I need this cash so bad. And then you have to like talk them off a ledge of like, maybe let's start at 840,000. And they're like, well, the Bill and Claire just sold theirs. <laughs> yeah. That's correct. They had a fucking real house, you moron. <laughs> So you have to, you're, and then they can just walk away. They can make you look at 50 houses yeah, and be like, well, I want one with 19 closets. This one only has 12. (laughs) You're like, holy fuck this bitch. It's because too many people watch house hunters and they think that they're Mm. all their checklists are so important. What are your must needs? It must be a detached. It has to have a garage (laughs) with a fucking, yeah, it's got to have all these, you know, and it's like, just get a house, you dumb fuck. (laughs) Where are you going to live? Just live. Just sit down and live. What are you doing in there? What are you doing? What do you need that? I need 2.5 bathrooms. I need this. I need shut up, you know? (laughs) So I would hate being a realtor. If I was a successful, if you could start any job as a success, you'd love it. Oh, be a realtor. Yeah. The successful realtor is great because you just have assistance. You have assistance. You're like, send her, send the plebs out to show, do the showings. Yeah. I only deal with people who are buying $8 million mansions. Yeah. But to be a desperate new realtor, yeah, the worst. <laughs> desperate realtors, that would the be a really worst. good show. Des- <laughs> like you, and you know, the, of course, there's desperate realtors. There's a million. There's ten thousand yeah. realtors. Is your realtor desperate? No. No. No, he's but th- th- he's just like yeah, all right, I'll say. Yeah. How did you find him? Did you just call him? I just he was one of my one Why of. Why isn't Terry Peranich your realtor? Terry Peranich. <laughs> That's because now shocking. Terry that you Peranich didn't is a <laughs> is a life coach now. Oh, he's not even a realtor anymore. No, he. I think he was barred from. Uh, what? How do you get oh. disbarred from selling homes? I don't know. I don't know how you do that. He just. Ha- yeah, I don't know what he did. So but now he he's did a life something. coach. So yeah, now he's like he'll say stuff th- online that's like keep working and getting your grind on, and then in- and then it'll just say Terry Peranich as if it's a fuck. As if like he's, it's his yeah, quote. Yeah, like he like he's the. There's nothing worse than the guy who like quotes himself oh with stuff God. phrases that are in the world. Also, people that keep on saying "get your grind on," grind my gears. Yeah, <laughs> get your grind on. It. Get like, grinding. What does that mean? Get your grind on. Work harder. Like, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll do more shows. Yeah, I'll do in more. Tiny little I'll towns. Do I'll keep doing more. Get your. Gr- <laughs> what? Keep grinding, and I'll continue to ignore you. But getting your grind on <laughs> is half the fun. Just grinding and getting no money and grinding. Grinding on out. I don't care how old you are. Continue to grind. The thing I will say about realtors, though, is they are excellent writers. They are pretty good. Because they make ours sound good. They your look house sounds beautiful. <laughs> not that it's not. It isn't. It is. <laughs> but it, it isn't. sounds stunning and gorgeous. It sounds stunning and gorgeous. It says that this yeah, is. I, a I, did, I did. Yeah, I was talking about that. Yeah, you I are, got this is a house fish right here. You can get house fished. Be, like the pictures are are like do represent it well. Like I don't feel like these pictures were taken five years ago when it, you were no. here. They yeah. are now. This is yeah, what your house not, looks like yeah, now. Exactly. Someone's yeah, not going to show off and be like, Jesus me. Christ, this house is fat. This house got. <laughs> this house got way. <laughs> this house got smaller. This like what happened to this house? This house shrank over the course of this. This house is older than it appeared. I just like the beginning of it. It sounds so quaint. This charming bungalow is situated on a huge lot in a quiet cul-de-sac. Are you in a cul-de-sac even? 
Um, yeah, because the end is trees, I guess. Oh, yeah, so it's like a that. dead end road. It, oh, so instead of a dead end road. Dead end road. <laughs> <laughs> this they is situated at the that. near the end of a dead end road. <laughs> Do you like just driving into trees? Just steps from the river valley. Where's just the other steps. part that made me laugh? Uh, where's the walk into the living room thing? Uh, there. Step into the inviting living room. Ooh. Flooded with natural light. Flooded. <laughs> Step into the basement flooded with natural water. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. that is a skill, though, to like make like yeah. a shit. Not, I'm saying your house is a shit, yeah, but, but make a yeah. shit all sound yeah. stunning. No, but yeah, you're right. It makes it sound like, ooh, ooh you've got. I must see. I it. I must see this house. Well, and the craziest part is the modern, modern showings. Like now that we all have cameras on the front, yeah. now that you can see. Oh, you can right? see. You can people. see everybody come up. You can <gasps> see them in the backyard. You can oh see them leave, God. and everybody has cameras. Yeah. And usually they show your whole yard and your yeah. whole front yard, so you can see them come up. So sometimes, like. You know, in the 1990s, you're like, okay, we've got it's we have a showing at one. We got to start cleaning big time at, n- at noon. Yeah. <laughs> we've got, and then dust everything and, and get everything put cookies. away and put the bread in the put the bread in the to- in the oven. Hide everything. <laughs> Hide our life. <laughs> Hide everything we do. Put the condoms in the cat's mouth. <laughs> but we, so that we. Yeah, so you have to get everything ready from noon to one. Then you have to vacate at 12.45. You have to go sit in a fucking Tim Hortons parking lot with your family. <laughs> and then somebody comes up to your house and just stands there and then yanks on an awning. Just grab... <laughs> uh, let me test this awning. Test it! Like, so, like, one of our showings was just... no. They didn't even go in the house. They just... One lady grabbed an awning and... Yeah! just yanked on it and then was like uh-uh. i don't like that I, I tested their awnings and they failed my awning <laughs> test <laughs> i'm like bitch this is a showing not a fucking pull and you not know what an i mean awning. you can't just not an awning pull <laughs> i'm gonna go in his house and test everything <laughs> but some people will they'll go in your house and just fucking let me just test the, how robust this shower head is <laughs> oh my God. i'm allowed to i'm sure sh- i'm at a showing <laughs> I'm a potential buyer. I'm a potential buyer. <laughs> and they don't have to do anything. They just How walk through your house. They have windows. an hour. <laughs> so we had some people that walked through and like looked and, you know, was in the yard. But as soon as you see pointing, you're like, it's over. Yeah. They're not. No. Yeah. They're not buying it. If you see pointing and then like. Any. Like, yeah. Like, like, I don't know about their that. Mouths, yeah. These windows are. I don't know. Yeah. As soon as yeah, the pointing and the whispers and the couples. The tile in the bathroom looks like it slid down the wall the first he time d- he yeah, tried to why, install. He it. looks like it looks like he failed at this first. <laughs> like it looks okay now, but it looks like somebody failed at this before yeah. it worked out. Yeah, you don't want to hear people going through your house. You definitely don't. You definitely do not want to hear and that. And realtors, you you know, it's a closed circuit. They've done a pretty good job of keeping real people out. Yeah. You, you can't just go and look at a house. You can't just be on the street and be like I want to go look at that. Yeah, unless it's an open house. Um, well, you still need a realtor. You ha- You can't just walk in? No. You can I just thought wal- open houses, you, you, you could just you walk mo- in. You can't just waltz into an open house. Like we My would, mom we and I used to just waltz really? into open houses. Yeah. I don't know if it, I don't think, I think in the modern times, <laughs> they've closed that loop. They just have like a key <laughs> that a realtor will have the code for. No, an open house and, though, when the realtor just No, I know what you house. mean. Yeah, but we, we went to some open houses and we were like, hello, and just knocked. And, and there nothing. There? Nobody what? was there. Because That's the, not an and open the, house. But then there was a key lock on the front. That's so you contact house. your realtor and your realtor okays it with them. And then you, you know, so you still, so it's still an open house. You can still go. It's still, uh, but there's no realtor there. You can just go in with your realtor. Well, because Wendy McGee and I used to always go on like Sundays around. It was like garage sailing yes. for you guys. You we'd guys go and look at houses that we could houses. never afford. And that is kind of fun. We'd eat the cookies that they'd have out. That's kind of cool. I don't know if they still do it like that. I don't know if open houses still work like that because they had to close the circuit, right? Yeah. There was too many comfries and bricks. and the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's too many people trying to crack the code of yeah. realty and, and drive their prices down. Yeah. And they were like, we got to close the loop. So now there's one website, realtor.ca. That's yeah. it. There's no other really, like, because other, if you're just on the internet and you're looking, you're like, I want to look at that. And they're like, that's pending. That's been pending for nine months. Yeah. But you wouldn't know because you're not on, you didn't get a code from your realtor yeah, yeah, to yeah. look at that site, to look at the secured site or whatever. So, but, but I don't blame them. Yeah. That's their livelihood, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely weird. Showings are weird. Yeah. Just ha- and just people in my house. I don't like people. You should have just stayed at your showings and like just sat Hi there. TV. 
<laughs> I'm just watching TV. Go ahead, look around. Go ahead. <laughs> fucking say what you want. Say what you want. Well, you could definitely tell, like, ours was only on for, like, a few days, so everybody's still in busybody mode. We're yeah. like, make sure you dust over the... Oh, my God, the fan has dust. Um, but there was some that we looked at that had been on the market for 80 days, and you could just tell. Days. like, Yeah, so you walk into their house, and you're like, ooh, like, all they did was, like, put the fucking ashtray under the couch. <laughs> you know, they didn't do anything. They there's were, they, houses, I've looked on realtor.ca, where they literally, it looks like a hoarder lives there, and they're still posting the pictures. Like, that's how desperate people are for real estate right now. I can't, there was one, there was one yeah. that we looked at that was like, I was like, these photographs are almost like what you would send your realtor of the things that need Don't, to be fixed before yeah. we sell. It was like, there's one house, and it was like, photograph number one is a sink with with uh, dirt in it. <laughs> Just a close-up of a sink with dirt. Yeah. And then the next one was a hot water tank with duct tape on it. <laughs> and they had they were zoomed in on the duct tape. And then a, <laughs> and then a, and then a window that was dirty and broken. And I'm like, what are these? Are your these home are your photos? Pictures? Like, this is your pictures, bitch. This like, is a wow. terrible dating profile. <laughs> and our realtor was like, yeah, some realtors are not smart. No. It's like, you know, some of them are just like, what photos did they send me on that USB stick? Oh. Upload it to the site. Oh, my God. But I don't know if people are, you know, the market's weird, I guess. I don't know. Like some some if a house is a like basically they're like if a house is kind of a deal it's yeah. getting snapped up and if a house isn't a deal it'll stay on for a long time huh. people aren't getting mortgages for big houses anymore so like if you're in a fancy neighborhood 750 800 yeah. um it's harder to sell those homes now people don't ha aren't qualifying for those kinds of mortgages yeah average people aren't yeah. so then our little fucking box is like i guess so all right. Is this what we've been reduced to? Did you find a new Lord. house? Um, we're sort of looking at places, whatever. My kids like, there's this one place my kids like because it has a hot tub. Fuck yeah. But there's no garage. Oh, fucking. Well, no kids garage. Kids don't care about garages. You can build a garage, I don't really, Dad. Yeah, I'm one of the only <laughs> males in Fort Saskatchewan that is like, no garage is not a deal breaker. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I'm that much of a, like, a puss. <laughs> That like I don't even need a garage. I don't have tools to I'm put like, in there. I'm like, if I could fix something, I'd do it in a shed. <laughs> yeah, I have you enough know? shit for a shed, but not yeah, a garage. Yeah, like I'll just fucking do it inside, <laughs> I guess, if I'm fixing something. What about when you're fixing your car? When am I ever fixing my fucking <laughs> car? I don't even do my brakes anymore. Yeah, why would you? I used to do my brakes all the time. Really? And they were always wrong. <laughs> like I would like, <laughs> like those are fine. Like, everybody who got in my car was like, when did you do the pads? Like, uh, <laughs> like it already sounded like it was on that strip. Uh, like, eee! Oh, the squeaking? Yeah, when they, the were, grinding, they were brand right? new. Not grinding, oh, but I've yeah. I've had a grinder before. And I kept you had a bit of a grinder? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, I've, yeah, I've definitely, yeah. I fucked I up some brakes it. big time. I sold my Saturn, and I'm like. Well, because you so get used they grind. to. Because you get, you get used to how far <laughs> yeah, you have to press. Yeah, my car was grinding. Your car was grinding my more than you were. You got to get your grind My car out. was booking festivals, selling houses. Watch it. <laughs> it was doing <laughs> great. <laughs> it was such a, gr a grinder, that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't enjoy. No, I, yeah, I, you get, because you get used to how far you have to press to make it stop. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, other people are like, I like to press my foot a little yeah. bit and stop. And I'm like, sometimes you got to go to the floor oh, with this. Floor? Sometimes you got to push this bitch. And then I just get used to having to push it to the floor. Yeah, and then you pick up a rental car, and then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, whoa! that breaks fast. That breaks whoa! fast. Somebody that left the look. emergency brake on. Whoa. <laughs> I can't even move without braking. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. I'm not used to brakes that work. <laughs> I'm not used to. Usually you've got to fucking ram it. Like, <laughs> hey, can I cut a hole? Maybe if I, instead of fixing my brakes, I'll cut a hole in the bottom of my car so that I can push it down even farther. <laughs> Flintstone is like Rear. my no, heels it was, down. It was kind of strange. I don't know. But yeah, it's yeah, the showings. And then I'm looking at the wrong stuff. Yeah. So like when we go to other houses to look, I'm like, I like where he stopped painting. That's a nice paint line. He used, ta he used tape on that, I bet. What are you supposed to be looking for? Well, the realtor's like, you know, what are you fucking, you know, look at the windows, look at the fucking big, you know, look at the sunroof, look at, you know, like try to look for major problems. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, the baseboards are really, 
He didn't even paint at all on the baseboard <laughs> when he did it. I like that. And then other things, that I'd see somebody like paint over the base. Like when I see paint that is like s- looks slathered and they didn't use tape and it's like not Turns precise at all, I'm like, let's get out of here. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Your OCD goes. Whoa. Somebody, yeah. Somebody will be like, it's still a great house. I'm like, yeah, but look at what he did to the garage paint. He didn't put any. He didn't use any tape. He just <laughs> lathered it, and it's one coat. You know, just because it says one coat on the thing doesn't mean it's one coat. It's marketing, you fucking loser. It needs yeah. two coats. Yeah. I don't know. But you, when you bought your house, how did that go? Was it? When I bought my condo? Yeah. It was, I, like, my realtor, I I was an idiot, first of all. I was, like, too, like, young to, and then my mom didn't come with me that day because we got into a big fight. Ugh. Oh, God. Bad timing. Bad timing, Wendy. Because you guys were yard sale buddies. We were yard sale buddies. But yeah, then I'm like, I bought this. Co- I don't even, I didn't even look at that many. But yeah, I should have definitely uh, asked more questions and done more stuff, mm-hmm. more research and stuff. But how many did you look at? Like, were like you probably did like five? Okay. I yeah, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have done much more than that. I'd like to but get it like over with. I know. It, I wanted to get over with two, but like, I don't know. And then I l- never listen to them when they say this neighborhood is turning around. Never. It's never turning around. It will not turn around. When mm. I'm dead, that condo is going to be worth $500,000 because the next day they're going to mm. like turn it around. Yeah. They're always like, we're going to, don't worry. We're going to, all these poor people, they'll be gone. Yeah. Because you know where poor people go when they don't have money? Um, nowhere. Nowhere. They go nowhere. Poor they go and don't camp at Boyle Street. Yeah, they're like chimpanzees. <laughs> poor people are like chimpanzees where they're like, no, this is my ancestral tree. <laughs> this is my tree and my family's tree. <laughs> and I'll walk the perimeter and get any other chimpanzees out of here. I saw somebody They're very the chimpanzee-like. On a concrete, on uh, the building next to us, they have this big concrete pad. And there's someone who put up a mm-hmm. tent on it like, you think they're going to come out and be like, let them stay. When we were in Denver, there was like a family that lived on a concrete pad where like a commercial piece of commercial real estate had obviously like fallen through or something. Yeah. And it was just a concrete pad in the middle of downtown Denver. But they were and there was just a family like slotted. living there like it was a ha- like it was a house. There was like a kid had a bed over there and then the oh dad had a TV, fuck. had a little TV and as he was sitting. It was like plus 38. It was so hot. And oh the dad's God. like. Watching television. I'm like, how the fuck is he watching television? But yeah, they had really built quite a life for themselves on this concrete pad downtown in Denver. Oh my God. There, people are just like popping up wherever they please now. And I, I know times are tough and everything, but. They ain't that fucking tough. <laughs> Not when you got a robust GoFundMe. I went to the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just loved, Sean. But the <coughs> condo. Yeah, because you you're st- yeah well because that's the thing too is you're you're scared. I'm scared of buying stuff. I'm scared yeah, of it. Yeah, because I got fucked so hard. Yeah, it's fearful. There's yeah. a fear to like. I guess I'll buy this and then like and then can I'll I afford it? I don't know. Here. And then like I'll buy something and it'll end up being like some trash palace that j- they just put a bunch of paint on and like yeah. made it look nice, but there's just like mold everywhere. Or and something. my income is so tenuous where they could be yeah. like. Uh, we're not gonna use you anymore. And you're like, okay, yeah. well, don't tell CIBC. <laughs> Please don't call CIBC <laughs> and tell them that you're not gonna book me for that show anymore. <laughs> because if they found out, I'd CIBC's really be. CIBC's gonna fucked. be calling you, Booker, uh, yeah. and finding out if I work for you regularly. Hi there. <laughs> you're on the over my dead body list. I am on an over my dead body. So are you? We're both on an over. S- sorry, my dead Sean, body but list. the underwriter did call the booker, and he said that he on- <laughs> he only uses you for stuff when your name is brought up by the client. <laughs> he never uses you if there's an open pitch. No. And so we are. You unfortunately that puts you over the debt ratio <laughs> limit, <laughs> and you qualify for staying where you currently live. <laughs> Aw, that's too bad. But you are still going to have to sell your home and rent from the people you sell to. Yes. <laughs> and then you can do showings when you're st- pending, you know, like you so like right well, now it'd be like pending. That's silly. Well, because somebody can do an inspe- like the this really scary part is the inspection. Yeah. Because the person is like, I'll buy it for that price. Which, could and you then get they a, do an inspection. Your own inspection before so you know about anything or that's just a waste Maybe of money. Maybe I should have. I don't know. I don't know what people do, but like they the person who wants yeah, it's like a so they pay like six hundred, yeah, five six hundred bucks, get an inspection done, and then they come back with a list of twelve things. Like, well, I don't know, uh, and then the person can just walk away. They can just be yeah. like, that list is long. Yeah, 
That list of things is long. But if somebody and our house is old. It was built in. House. Yeah, like w- with our house, they would sort of be like, "I want this backyard. It's a it's big a backyard. Big yard, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, and steps from the river valley. Don't yeah. eat the fish. <laughs> human waste is pumped into it. You can see the prison. They're just from pumping here. human waste right into that fucking river. They are? Like, oh, for sure they are. There's Ew. a lot of human waste. People are really like, I've seen people like floating in the Fort Saskatchewan Gravy. River, and I'm like, I used to what swim is in that. wrong with you? I used oh. to swim in the, f- and now I look at it, and I'm like, why did I swim in it? Look at the yeah. current. Like, I could have been scary. pulled away and dead. Yeah. But I was out there swimming along in the river, like That's with crazy. a current that could have dragged me away. Maybe in Calgary in their shallow pussy river, but not yeah, in, their in little this bitch river. real fucking river. Real man's river. In a real man's river. <laughs> not in a man's not river. Not in some pussy you river. You can die in a man's river. Yeah, but you can't drown in the Bow River. Yeah, it's not and too it's, bad. And it's much cleaner, too. Like, you can mm. actually see the bottom of it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I could have lived my whole life without moving again. I easily. hate moving so much. It's not fun at all. No, because you don't know what people might like. They might, you know, you feel like you're op- you're putting yourself open for this massive rejection. Yeah. Where like you leave your house, you clean it up as nice as you can and you go, here you go. What do you think? And then they go two twelve. Yeah. And you're like, I'm going to fucking burn your garden down. Yeah. Two twelve. 12. You're like they, they can yank below. on your awnings, not even look at yeah. your house. They can do whatever the fuck they want. Like yeah. some people came and looked and didn't even go in. They just stood and looked at it and left. <laughs> like I said, this one lady c- came and just yanked on an awning and left. Oh my god! And like these are we had to leave our house for this shit. We had, like to, we had sit to sit in a parking lot. Yeah, drinking ice caps. <laughs> and then you're watching them in their backyard, kind of like kicking stuff. And you're like, hey, get away from that fucking. Don't you be kicking on that. <laughs> Someone kicks your cat. Don't you be kicking on my dog run. <laughs> yeah, it's falling apart. What of it? <laughs> it's baked into the price. Everything you're touching and hating is baked into the price. It's been evaluate, evaluated yep. and is a fair market yep. price. <laughs> it is a it's fair all been accounted price. for fucking kicky McKicks. <laughs> Don't be pointing and kicking on my shit. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't want you to live there. <laughs> you know. I, I just hate moving because I hate like well, I like moving because you get I get rid of a lot of stuff usually. Like when oh I move, I'm like, God, I do yeah. not want to move this. I do not want to move this. Here, have it, have it. But we had to move my mom like three times. And really? she was a hoarder. And Ooh. she made us move her hoard. Ooh, oh, we would a be hoard like, move. We would be like, Mom, you don't usually need hoarders. four boxes of Family Circle magazine from 1980s. Like, that, you don't she need this. She such a unique personality. It really is. Because she, usually hoarders are like, the, their number one hoard is their home. Yeah, they don't ever want to leave it. They don't yeah. want to leave the home. They're like, I love all these boxes and everything's where it's supposed to be. And yeah. I love my cupboards. And maybe one day they brought a realtor in and the yeah. realtor was like, you could probably get two twelve eight eighty for it, and they were like, "Absolutely not!" Yeah. Ever since Rick died, <laughs> and then they start talking, crying about a death, and then you find out why they have all these spoons because some <laughs> fucking loser died twelve years ago. So you got to keep every piece of paper he fucking spit on. He licked that up. No, Do he not touched that, that once. Do not throw that out. Do not throw out that can of soup. It's not even. I fucking, didn't even understand I remember watching, what she was hoarding, though. I watched an episode of The Hoarders where this woman, like, they tried to throw out a can of soup on her. Her family was like, is, they're like, we're going to throw this out, Nana. It's, yeah. you know, from 1995. And she's like, it's not even, it's not even bowed out yet. <laughs> and then you look at all her other soups and they're so old that they went poof, like oh, a little pot, like they were all popped out. Inside. Yeah, they popped out like a fat belly Campbell's oh soup thing. They God. were so old. And she's like, that's not old. It hasn't even fucking expanded on it and, and degraded on itself yet. I don't know. My mom's like, my mom wasn't, I don't think, a sentimental hoarder as much as she was just like, I'll use it. I'll use it one day. I'm like, you're not ever going to use it. It's been in a box for five years. You're never going to use it. Mm-hmm. But she was like, no, no, that will be. And I remember when like, she, di- we, she died, we went through all her stuff. And I'm like, well, maybe we're going to find something really Cool. valuable Mm-mm. no there wasn't a thing everything Not a thing. yeah everything was she didn't have an estate and she God. didn't have a fun little treasure Perfect. for us to find yeah. Yeah. other than the letter that we found that she wrote to my dad after they divorced that she and never mailed a trace of his dick oh my God. no not that no not it a, was not a dick tracing it was it was pretty interesting <laughs> <coughs> but uh so you only found the lo- little love letter that well, was I found it. that i found other like 
I found letters that I'm like, mom, you are a human being. It's so weird when your parents die and you mm. like, I, I've talked to other people about it that have like looked and like found like love letters and they were like kind of like raunchy and I'm yeah, like, mom, like, I, I didn't know you fucked. You. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, I didn't you know get that. over here and I'll give you a quick suck. Yeah. And then like I looked up these guys that she had like been in a thing with and they're still alive and I was really tempted to message one of them, but I didn't. Did but she I ever blow you like she, she said she would Did in that letter? Did my mom ever blow you? <laughs> because <laughs> let me tell you. Because you never had to move her, you lucky we fuck. If she blew her. you ten times, I'm going to come over there and punch you in the face. <laughs> because you were never there to help move. It was always me and some other people who don't even have dicks that could oh be sucked. Oh, my God. I don't even have a dick. <laughs> yeah. My mom couldn't suck my dick. Either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a dick for my mom to suck. And here I am moving boxes. Wendy McGee didn't know she was such a cocksucker. <laughs> she really <laughs> did not know liked until she passed away and we found But no, we, yeah, because yeah, uh, hoarding, yeah, the hoarding is a bad one. I feel one like where I'm, I'm not a hoarder. I'm a mild, like, I keep too much stuff that I don't need. And I, I'm a bad, I'm a shopaholic. Like, I I buy too much shit that I have no business owning. I'm like, well, I'm never mm. going to wear this. What? A, why did I buy this, like, sequin mermaid <laughs> style gown that I'm never going to wear anywhere? Yeah, there, there's definitely going to be a whole lot of people in this generation who think their parents or their mom has money. Yeah. And then when they pass They're away, they'll be like, find out. they'll open the garage door and see 800 Amazon boxes yeah. and be like, oh, that mommy had a problem. Oh, ma- that's so Mama it's the had ADHD a problem. too. It is like the 80 because like impulse shopping is like getting that rush of buying things. Mm-hmm. And when I got diagnosed, my doctor, because I got diagnosed a month after my mom died, she asked me, do you think your mom had ADHD? I'm like, for sure, Wendy had it. It Bad. was probably through the roof. Through the roof. Crazy. Like, my mom was had a really good government pension. Yeah. And le- there we had, like, no, nothing. She yeah. left us nothing. And she always told us she was going to leave us nothing. She never was. She was like, I'm spending I will leave my money you now. nothing. What does your dad say? <laughs> nothing. My dad doesn't <laughs> talk about that. My dad doesn't bring that up. My dad's up. just a quiet Buddhist. But um yeah, he doesn't No, talk but money. like my mom was like I'm like where where are you spending? What is going on? But then like we find out how much she was paying in car insurance mm-hmm. because she was driving around like a f- And you can and you can tell when people have big inheritance energy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it sh- it, it should be I don't know if it's a phrase or not, but it should be <laughs> big inheritance energy yeah. where you where they're kind of currently poorish, yeah. but they know they've got 1.8 coming coming to them. Yeah. Right? So they got this sort of you're like you're poor. I don't know why you're acting so weird. And it's like, because I'm going to be motherfucking rich. Right? Like, I, if, if I knew, if I had big inheritance energy, my condo being worth absolutely nothing would not bother me. Mm-hmm. Because I'd be like, oh, I got money coming to me. I'm just going to pay it off when I get that money. Yeah. And I have a, and I'm going to make my money. But yeah, no, yeah, big inheritance energy is a real thing. For sure it is. Yeah. I had friends that, like, whenever their grandparents called, I, before I understood, like, money, really, yeah. whatever. Their grandparents would call and they would drop fucking mm-hmm. everything. Like we'd be watching X Files, like season finale X Files. Like, oh my god, what's gonna happen before you can pause television? Yeah. You can't pause this. You, 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 and if you're gonna record it, it's too late. Yeah. I don't have any tapes. All my tapes have Oilers games from the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just watching the X Files. You're like, this is the best episode I've ever seen. And then their grandparents would call and yeah. they'd be like, boom. Shut that fucking television off. <laughs> Shut everything off. The washing machine goes, Grandma! Grandma! And it's like, because they knew, like, this is the, the yeah. w- more important than anything else is maintaining this relationship. Yeah. The yeah. maintenance of this relationship is the most critical part of our lives. So that's probably what my mom did wrong, was she kept telling us, there's nothing left for you. There's nothing. Don't tell your kids that. No. That's let the em, dumbest let them thing think. you can do. Don't let, let them think. Let them think there's think, something. Let Give them, them a there's something. Give them a binder yeah. and say, when I pass, yeah. take this into the fucking law firm of Schultz, Schultz yeah. and Stapleton. And then you go, yes, mama. And you're like, fuck yeah. And then you open the binder and you're like, this is all just it's fucking just, graphs. It's just, this is all fucking AI empty graphs. Paper. <laughs> this is inheritance like, GPT. That'd be hilarious to like have a thing and be like, do not open this till I die. If you open it mm. when I before I'm dead, you I'll get nothing. i change my will. But yeah. like... But then there's literally nothing in it, and they yeah. open it. That'd be hilarious. Uh, I have to make tra- a <laughs> just dick trace. I have to make a will because I have cancer. What? I have no, to yeah, to don't. Age four. I'm look at how good I look. You do look pretty good. I know everyone's like, you look so good. I'm like, I feel great. <laughs> I guess I am. You're a great feeling person. I don't know, but well, uh, that's not really why we took a break. We took a break because we're, I guess, lazy and mm-hmm. stuff, right? Well, we took a break because I first got cancer, and I was like, well, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even that like 
the chemo wasn't even as bad. I was just really lazy. Yeah. And then after it was gone for a little bit, <laughs> I was like Took still lazy. Holiday. And we kept on, hey, well, yeah, let's start the podcast again. Let's start. We were all just being lazy. Mm-hmm. But then uh, now mostly the cancer gym. is mostly gym. Always gym. Always, Always like, I don't have time for this shit, you guys. I got to go to Grand Prairie. Uh, and I, uh, and I, uh, yeah, so then I, I was supposed to do a study. This is how I found out I had it to get. I was supposed to do a study about the, the correlation of exercise and uh, uh, colon cancer staying in remission. So mm. I was going to get like a personal trainer and like be on Holy this exercise shit. program. Yeah, I was like, they were like, do you want to do it? I'm like, yes, I do. Wow. So then I like had to have all these blood tests and, and tests to like make sure everything was good. And I had this, I don't remember what it's called. It's like a carcino what a blood test. And if you're above five, that's bad news. They've got to check more. But if you're below five, you're fine. So I had like a 3.1. So they were yeah, like, so she's like, fine. Right. And then I had a CAT scan, which I wasn't supposed to have until uh, like end of September uh, because it's a year after my surgery. And I had a CAT scan. And then I have this app. I don't know if you have the app called the My Chart app. No, I would fucking. Don't do it I if you. Would, it because. Yeah. <laughs> I actually like. I mean, now that I'm sick, it's very helpful. So wait a minute. So you got the reading at the same time as your doctor? Like yeah, you I got found the results at like 7 a.m. on a Monday morning, and I didn't have an appointment with her until Wednesday. And you I should have called your doctor and said, "I need you to come to my house at 3:30 tomorrow. It's important." <laughs> like make an appointment for your doctor that to come see funny. you, and then make that bitch wait. I'm never gonna say anything <laughs> bad about my doctor because she's incredible. No, she she's like nice, yeah. lets me text her and stuff. Like wow, she's, she's crazy amazing. But uh. But yeah, so I at 7 a.m. in the morning, I got this message and I was just like, why is there so then it like it said stuff about my ovaries being old. I'm like, thanks a lot for thanks a lot, <laughs> egg shaming me. Yeah, <laughs> you did get egg shamed. I got egg shamed. And then they were like, uh, I don't I'm not good at science. So I'm like, what does all this mean? What does metastasize mean? What does this and this mean? It, so mean was, it just means one size bigger than extra large. Yeah, that's what I thought. Right. But then I'm yeah, like, you went to a Mexican restaurant and they metastasized you. <laughs> They metastasized your margarita. Then I stupidly Google uh, Googleized. I Googled metastasize, and I'm like, that doesn't sound good. I thought I didn't have colon cancer anymore. Like this is weird. So then <laughs> I like I was not gonna say anything to anyone. I was just gonna go to the appointment. But I'm like, this is just weird. So I sent it to my brother, who is also going through the exact same thing as I am. Mm. Um, but I'm winning again because mine's in my liver and my abdomen and his is only in his liver. What a bitch. So what a little bitch I'm winning. Oliver. But but that's the thing is like he he just texted me back. He's like, um, I'm gonna come with you to the meet to your appointment because I'm not gonna lie to you, there's some shit in here that does not look good. And I was like, hmm. Okay. And then I freaked out for two days and then but actually I'm kinda glad I knew because like he did come with me to my appointment and when I got there the girl who was doing the study stuff with me comes out and her face looks like death itself and you just see a giant black guy who was supposed to be a personal trainer just walk past you like sorry Sorry. we would have had fun it would have been good it would have been good (laughs) (laughs) but yeah so i saw her face and i'm uh she's like i said well i got i know what's going on she goes okay so you you know that you can't be in the study anymore i'm like yeah i figured it out and Mm. then they told me but i it was good that i kind of because i think i would have had a way harder time dealing with if i'm thinking i'm everything's fine Mm. And then they're like, by the way, you now Oh, especially in a situation cancer. like that where you're like, I'm going to be in a, a study. study. Like, yeah, I'm, I, yeah I'm, I'm a success story. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> this is going to be great. I'm on Ozempic. I got a person. <laughs> I got a personal trainer. Yeah. Like, this and by is the way, all. I've been on Ozempic for years. I'm not just one of those Ozempic jumpers. You're not I'm, a new Ozempic I'm lady. I'm an old school Should Ozempic I not have user. brought Ozempic into it? No, it's fine. I'm, I'm happy to tell people I'm on Ozempic, but I just don't want people to be like, oh, she's on Ozempic. Oh, she's Whatever. a new convert to Ozempic. Yeah. But no, that's when I found out I had, <laughs> I had cancer. <laughs> we told my dad. Uh, I went over to my brother's house and we told my dad. We're like, come over. Because I don't want to. I have a few friends that I wanted to tell to their faces. You were one of them, but I was just didn't have time to drive yeah, over to Saskatchewan. Yeah, you just gave me the chat GPT. I sent him a chat GPT message, which I can read <laughs> in a minute. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I, d- I felt, I thought, I thought. I when I read it, I didn't know it was. Ch- I had no idea it was ChatGPT until the very end. <laughs> you thought it was until me? I got to like d- 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 there was one part. Like if you read it, then you know people will be like, "Oh, that's when he knew." Yeah, that it was fake. That it was fake. But when we told my dad, uh, <laughs> my dad shows up, and so I'm like, uh, "So I have stage four cancer now too," and he's like, "Oh," and my dad's just not good at processing things. Oh, um, and. Uh, 
<laughs> so then, yeah. So then I said, so I just need, I just need to know one thing from you. Who are you choosing in the sibling death pool? <laughs> and he's like, Jesus oh, Christ, Kathleen. Kathleen, <laughs> I don't speak about my bets publicly. <laughs> That's between me and my cancer bookie. <laughs> I got a cancer bookie down at the cross. This is what I. S- <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> cancer bookie. We do need to do. We do need to do some sort of cancer bookie sort of thing. <laughs> You know, yeah, you know how they have, like, birth ones? We should have a Kathleen death pool. That'd be funny. That would be fun. That would be cool. I would take August 13th, 2040. 2040? Yeah, I would go long game. Oh, my God. Because I could win. Think about how much I I could win everything. I don't want to have cancer for that long. No. I'm saying it would go it would go away like a miracle and then come back like a fucking house on fire in 2039 (laughs) and you'd be dead within a week. But that's what I'm banking on. It's going to go away and then come back. Boom. This is gonna what I sent to you and then my friends that I'm close with, but I don't live near. So just a few other people got this. But <laughs> it says, hey, in brackets, friend's name, exclamation mark. I hope this text finds you well, which made me laugh because that's what your dad yeah. says. <laughs> I wanted to share something important with you. Recently, I've been diagnosed with stage four cancer. I know it's not the easiest news to hear. But I believe in being open and honest with those I care about. That's such a crazy <laughs> thing there AI to say, right? It would mean a lot to have your support and positive vibes during this challenging time. Let's continue making cherished memories together, and your friendship will undoubtedly make a difference in my journey. Thank you for being such an incredible friend. And then they said, ChatGPT wrote that for me. What did you put <laughs> into ChatGPT to make it spit that out? I think I said, how do you tell... A fun and uplifting way to tell people you have stage four cancer. I swear to God, I think that's what I did. Oh my God! Well, I think I can yeah, look it up. Yeah, cherished memories. <laughs> yeah, we're like, you're like, we don't have any cherished okay. memories. <laughs> okay, lady. Okay. A nice, fun text telling a good friend I have stage four cancer. <laughs> wow, and it really did spit out quite a nice little story. Oh, it did. It works. I know that's everyone hates AI right now, but I'm fine with it. But. Yeah, I guess that's the toughest part about cancer is who's an in-person and who's a text and who's a call and who's a Facebook and who's a fuck. You know what I mean? And it was like I wasn't going to call. I'm not calling a bunch of people. I'm not having 8,000 conversations. of. I was all text and I'm like, if you don't like a text, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be constantly. No. Anyway, here we go. I don't to waste my whole day with that shit. Yeah. Yeah, I've got my script and then I have to. Oh, and just like telling people like (laughs) I went to the dentist before this. Because I had like a cracked tooth and I'm like, I have to get it fixed now because when you're in chemotherapy, you can't go to the dentist because if you get, well, if you get an infection, you have no white blood cells, so it could literally kill you. Right. So, (laughs) so I, I went to my dentist and then like, uh, he was somebody like, oh, oh, uh, why did you have to get booked in like so quick? I was like, oh, because I have cancer and I'm starting chemotherapy on Thursday. And that's all I wanted to say. And then I asked the dentist, like, what should I be doing to make sure I don't have a dental emergency or something during chemotherapy? And he goes, well, just do this, this, and this until your chemotherapy's done. And he's like, mm. when is your chemotherapy done? I'm like, never. When? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not. And then he looked at you. They've not told yeah. me. Maybe if it goes away, then it'll be over. But as far as I know now, I'll be doing chemotherapy for yeah. the rest of my life. So I'll probably find out like from a dentist. <laughs> so I'll be like, I get, I get a fucking, you know, I get something done for my teeth. And then they're like, and then he just is like, I got some bad news. <laughs> I have good news and bad news. The, but the, the good news is you can stop flossing. <laughs> you can absolutely 100% stop flossing. And what's the bad news? I like flossing. And, and then, okay, so what is the bad news then? <laughs> The bad news is <laughs> it's everywhere. It's everywhere. You have a cancer called, it's everywhere. <laughs> you have a cancer called, it's everywhere. What's, uh, as long as I get to stop flossing. Yeah. So I have to now write a will because I have so much stuff. But no, I do have a couple a things. First will and testament. I have to, do you have get a will? You have kids. Do, do you have a will? No. You I'm should just have a will. I assume everything is just going to go to them, right? A will, I no, think. No, no, no. You can't do that. You can't assume because like, we couldn't find my mom's will. And they wouldn't let release stuff to us. They wouldn't oh, let us yeah, do anything right. until yeah. we had a will. So you have to have a will re- regardless yeah, of with you will. have nothing at all. Yeah. You have kids. You definitely need a will. Yeah, I have I, I have dogs. I have dogs. Yeah. People have already started asking me. People have already started asking me <laughs> like for my for dresses. Your, for your dresses? <laughs> Who's getting your dresses? 
as like, jokes. What about as my jokes. jokes, motherfucker? I said I'm gonna auction my jokes off. <laughs> someone's getting Hitler pubes. I swear to God, someone's if you for a price. Do five hundred dollars, five hundred. Do I hear five ten? I so would love to have a joke to auction. Natasha Miles. <laughs> <laughs> She just holding up a 13 and <laughs> come and get the envelope with the joke written in it. She never actually did write it down. I, never, I just have, you'll just have Hitler pubes yeah, on it. Yeah, it'll There's just no say Hitler pubes. Anywhere. You know, everybody will get it. <laughs> yeah, because what happens to those great jokes with like Erwin Barker I passed know, right? away and all those great jokes that, that are just have. like, what did, yeah, like yeah. Did nobody gets to tell them. They go to the estate, I, no. to the estate yeah. and then they just get written down on a piece of paper. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. what would you have in your will to leave? Go oh, wait, no, sorry, this was gonna say. Like, so, and now you've all, I have people fighting over Eugene and Dottie, right? Because like, right? Because like, they're if I if I live for ten years, they'll probably die before me. But if I mm-hmm. don't, I might die before them. And yeah. like, uh, which I s- always used to joke about wanting, and now I regret saying that. <laughs> I used to be like, I better die before them. And now I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have been so liberal with that sentence. Yeah, I but remember I felt so bad for my mom because she was like, I didn't, you know, because moms are good at like keeping, they're like, oh no, don't bother them yeah. with that. But like at a time that she was like very ill with cancer, they were writing a will. her dog was <gasps> dying too. Oh so she had to like put her God. dog down no. like a couple of weeks before she yeah. went to a hospice. Oh my God. And I'm like, oh my God. She never said that she had to put the dog down. Or maybe I, maybe I'd heard and I was an asshole and I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That's too bad. Well, people have been asking for Eugene and Donnie. Oh, I'll take care of all the guys there. I'm like, I love that you guys don't think that, but um, they're coming with me, and they're mm. being thrown into the fire with me. Oh, <laughs> they're yeah. dead no, with they're coming, me. They're coming into the tomb. Nobody gets the dogs. They're, <laughs> they're coming into the fucking tomb. <laughs> My ashes will be mixed with their ashes. It should be a tomb. You should be like, you know. It should like, be a tomb. Yeah, like where they. The, I should be entombed. Th- 2,000 years from now, Dottie still has all her fur. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's you, Dottie, Eugene, all furred up, and you're oh in your happy God. dress. We'd be so cute. A little joke book on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> a leash with their. They, bury they, me. Actually, yes, bury me. I don't want anybody going through my joke books after this. Yeah, keep all I've your notebooks. I've actually said I don't know who I said it to, but I'm like I want all my joke books burned. But actually, yeah, put them in my casket with me and burn me. I don't want anyone going through that. Because well, that was the meanest thing I ever did to you, and that I didn't even really, really know mean. it was mean. That was the only time he almost made me cry. That was yeah, the only was really time mean. that was so mean. And I know you if it's, and it you was thought it was going to be funny, and I, I get it. I thought it was going to be funny, and I thought like in the moment it seemed funny to me, but yeah. it was like a joke book. And then I had like ripped up some words or something, and I'm no, like, no, you were saying like lot. You were re- reading through it and saying things that I'd not developed into jokes, but just ideas. And then you were like. Uh, and then you were like, rip. You didn't really rip it, but you just like fake ripped it. And I was like, I look up to Jean and it's really hurt my feelings. Yeah, I shouldn't, <laughs> have, I shouldn't have done that. I just felt like it was funny in the moment. Yeah, there's tons of stuff I've done that I thought was funny in the moment. Like when I was at Christine Von Egan's wedding, I like caught the bouquet and then I spiked it like a football and did a dance. And her mother was furious. They kicked me out of the wedding. They what? Were, oh, yeah. Really? I thought it was funny, but there's things that comics do in the moment that they are like everyone's gonna love this and then you do it and yeah, it just and you're like, mm. and because, yeah m- most people would do the same thing where they think something's funny and they do it but comedians would be like oh i'm gonna make a spectacle yeah, of this. yeah 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 yeah. and then the oh the spectacle backfired <laughs> big time <laughs> this whole spectacle thing i created has really gone awry yeah i was in my head i'm like this is gonna be so funny spike a boat that's so funny if i catch it i'm spiking it and I got it. And I'm I got it. And, it. I spiked, and it's, it does seem funny to me right now. <laughs> it, well, I where thought you it get was it funny. and you go, yeah, touchdown yeah. or whatever. And they're like, why would she do that? It's a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> she ruined the tradition. A girl's supposed to catch it and go, yay. <laughs> A man can save oh, me. Man yes, I'm still worthy of being saved by a man, <laughs> says the bouquet of the bouquet fucking says uh, just it's randomly The bouquet thrown. says I'm next. It's not that's dumb. the tradition the that you're the next one to get married. Thing. And I like, did not get married next. And Maybe I think I, I think guys should <laughs> throw like I think I think guys should throw like a set of keys <laughs> and then whoever catches it just leaves. You know? They're like, I can leave this wedding early. Yes, fucking <laughs> You know, because men don't want to be at weddings. No. Right. So you throw like, hey, there you go. You caught the thing that allows you to leave early and your girlfriend's not allowed to be mad <laughs> that you left your friend, her friend's wedding early. Instead, don't it feel like the womb started or something? 
Yeah, they like yeah. do that weird thing where they go under her dress and it comes, they come out in, in their mouth. I did not do that at uh. my wedding. It's creepy. And then they like fling it out. Oh, you ha- yeah, you take it with your mouth, right? Yeah, oh and then some boy. guy hangs it from his rearview mirror for months. It's weird. Yeah, there really should be an age limit. There should be an age limit on that one. Yeah, it I should didn't be do first it. wedding. First of all, first wedding only. Yeah. No second. <laughs> no. No second wedding. Tooth. Yeah. Garter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> teeth aren't touch. Teeth aren't touching a garter at a second wedding. No, no. Uh, I mean, you, you got to be under forty. Yeah. It should be just under forty. Yeah. Anything over forty, get. What are you doing? You got a crown. That's kind of the cool you got thing. A tooth, you could over chip. forty, you can you can say fuck off to all those weird mm-hmm. traditional bullshitty things and only do the ones you want to do. Those stupid little things. Yeah. So you don't have a will. What would no, you leave I, in your will? I, I I just have so little to give, <laughs> right? That it's like, wh- what you know, write a will. Okay, like me and a homeless guy, let's do this. <laughs> like, is it, like, you should get a will. You should get a will, homeless guy. I gotta leave you something in my will. I don't know what, but I will leave you something it in my will. It should be. I don't know what it could be. Ca- just cash, I guess. <laughs> just, some, just some cash. Wouldn't it be funny if I got the money? You can have the rest of my GoFundMe <laughs> that I don't use. The overuse. You're gonna spend all that. No, I'm being very good with it. I'm um, sure you are. I, yeah. My credit, my credit rating went up yeah. 50 points. What? Your credit rating went up? Yeah, because I paid off my credit card. Holy shit. (laughs) The bank's like, what's going on? What's happening? Did she win the lottery? I won the cancer lottery. I won it, bitch. We did. We once went to go get a uh, consolidation loan uh, because we were in dire straits and uh, we got denied. And (laughs) the lady said, well, at least you don't have cancer. (laughs) So now... Now I believe. BMO. Now I believe that that woman gave me cancer. <laughs> that BMO bitch did it. BMO At least you did. don't. Have, what a condescending. Rude. That was the weirdest. I've never. But I was. Cr- that is so. I was crying. Fucking and rude. Yeah. <laughs> that is so rude. Like it's such a bitch. It is rude. It was weird. That's it was weird. Very fucking rude. I'm like, you, was that supposed to make me feel better? Like oh, I went. Here's oh, here's what's funny. Uh, another funny little story. Because when we initially went to CIBC for like a you know real estate or whatever to be like hey what do we pre when do we qualify for and you feel like you're going to church like yeah. whenever you go to the bank it's like did you, you know, dress up in a church. suit i think i was dressed up more than i normally would like, yeah Hello. not a hoodie not green hoodie yeah, guy like, <laughs> nobody nobody with sleeves like this needs to show their t4s <laughs> but i had um yeah so we go in and it's this you know she's like 30 or something the girl that we yeah. were seeing and then she's like i think i know you and oh, i'm no. like um no i you know, I have one of those faces that reminds people of every fat, ugly person they know. <laughs> oh, and she's like, no, 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 no. Like, I think I actually know you. And then she's like, you're a comedian. Oh, my God. And then she's like, I saw you at the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, God. That's the only notoriety we get because that happened to me today was I picked up some glasses that I It's ordered. the only time you get recognized yeah. is when, in an awkward spot yeah. where it's not helpful. She's like, are you a comedian because one of the girls who worked here recognized your name and said you're a comedian i'm like yes i am i'm like yeah and then so here's what I didn't happened get a discount then, by then the way she but. All, she's like i remember you you're the you had that rape kiss joke <laughs> and i'm like uh this is the lady that's giving you a mortgage i don't know and she's like yeah yeah and then she's like yeah um i remember you and I, at this point i don't know because some women are trolling me like uh <laughs> some women will be like oh you're funny i heard you and that other times they're like oh yeah you're that really funny guy with that really funny joke that's like this but they're actually going oh, i, I hate, hate you, you oh, and no. i hated this joke and i want you to know which joke is gonna not <laughs> get you this mortgage you fucking oh piece of shit. God. So at this point, I'm kind of like, uh, ra- I don't know anything about a rape kit. She's <laughs> like, yeah, you you said um, oh. this set is going about as aw- This set is as awkward as a rape kiss. <laughs> and I was like, ah, uh, that's pretty funny. And my wife's like, what the fuck <laughs> is happening? And then she remembered another joke that I can't remember. Yeah. But it was just like that. It was another like sickening kind of like rapey. Hor- oh no, search party. Oh, that is. I a, used to have a joke yeah. about a search party yeah. where I'm looking for somebody Your who's wife. dead, you know, and I'm la- and I'm the lazy guy at the yeah. search party. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like a five minute long joke about like, oh, and then you gotta go on all these off trail walks because they stick you with the immediate family group, <laughs> and their tones all filled with hope, like Tracy, <laughs> and you're like the bitch is dead. <laughs> Can we go back to base camp? <laughs> Fuck. Like that. And then you find her in. And then yeah, she's explaining this whole joke to me. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm trying to act like I don't quite remember what. 
it, you know, I'm like, oh, I haven't done any of these jokes in so long. I don't remember them, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, oh, yeah, no. you. And then it's uh, I should have just said I remember the joke because then she'd be like, no, you said. And then she would say <laughs> what I said. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> At least she remembered you. And then but not your name. So and then she's like, oh, yeah, we'll see whatever. You got to find all this information, like all these millions of things you have to do. Yeah. And I'm like, OK. And then I kept emailing her and she was not responding. And I'm like, fuck. Like, so like after a month, I'm telling my wife, like she for sure hated me, yeah. hated those jokes, won't deal with me. And she's ghosting me. Yeah. Like but we're getting ghosted by the fucking bank. <laughs> and then I got a call from the branch manager who was like, oh, hi, I'm sorry. You're you know, she quit. I guess she like had quit her oh. job at CABC like two days after talking to us. And then they just let her emails over come your in jokes. No, <laughs> yeah. I, can't I will wait. never. Yeah, she tells I'll her never manager, do like, another mortgage never event. make me do a mortgage for him. And she's like, that's part of your job, Claire. <laughs> Either do the mortgage for the rape guy or get out. <laughs> I will never do a mortgage for a rapist. <laughs> no, but she's like, can I tell my sister I talked to you? And I'm like, what do you? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> You can definitely tell your sister you talk People to me. People like, like you, Sean, even though you don't think they do. I don't know do. what you're talking about. You can <laughs> talk to my, but you're the rape kiss guy <laughs> at the bank. Like that, you know, like this great. Nobody knows I'm a comedian. And then right when I fucking need people to not know I'm a comedian, yeah. they're well aware that I'm a comedian. And they didn't even see me do like a normal set. They saw me do like some, I must have been mad at Dino that weekend. Yeah, and yeah, been yeah. like, fuck you. I'm just going to do every, all the jokes people hate. That's when you do your best sets. You did one of those sets in Winnipeg. The last show. Oh, yeah. Show. They really. <laughs> was, there was some yeah. stuff that they that hated. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, do, I do the same thing, though. Is like if you I definitely hate a do, crowd, yeah. you definitely I go do. harder. I go meaner. Oh, you go I go big time. Yeah. Way worse. Like, I and go, you're also like, I have a fear. I have an, I'm an inner mom. I'm like, I gotta, I'm, if, if I get scared, I'm like, okay, I, I'll do a joke. I'll bail out yeah. and I'll just, okay, I'll tell this one that'll usually makes people laugh and I'll get out of here. You don't. You're no. like, you, uh, you, I'm not going to, I don't ruin want their you. Evening. I ruin, yeah. I ruin their evening. You don't want, you don't want to tell them a joke they're going to enjoy because you don't want them to enjoy it. My new favorite thing to say to like, if it's like, like an older woman that I can see is like crossed armed, angry at me, I'll be like, Hey, I'm going to find your son and I'm going to marry him. And I'm going to be your daughter-in-law. And she's like, no, you're, <laughs> she's no. She's like, no, no, Jesus, no. And then you said something like, well, at least you know your son's going to get blown properly or something like that or like whatever. Like, once a week if I feel like yeah. it. <laughs> she's like, oh, my heavens. But I love watching your show and just watching, like, women between the ages of, say, like, 55 and 70, like, come around yeah, on it. Yeah, they do come around Like, usually. where they're like, oh, no. And they're yeah. looking at their friends like, I don't know if we should. And then, like, within 50, they're like, Phew. <laughs> and then my clothes. And then they kind of have a few tisks and oh <laughs> and then after like ten minutes they're like <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like it's so fun watching them admit to themselves that like, yeah, this I can laugh. Funny. I can laugh yeah. at this. I can go ahead and laugh. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. Fucking why not? Yeah. And then you kind of like what were like maybe forty minutes in, you would go into your cancer stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they would there would be two minutes of them being like, "Is this for real? Or yeah, is, is she, she bullshitting re- us? Because this, this you can't bullshit? joke about cancer if you don't have. Yeah, it. if she's yeah. is she bullshitting us here? Because yeah. if she's pretending to have she cancer look like she for has some forty five second bit, yeah. I'm I hate I'm not her. on board. Yeah. yeah. So there's like this minute where they're like, "Oh, she ha- oh she has it." Yeah. But it takes them like a minute to be like, "Okay, yeah. she legitimately has it." It's happening, and now she can. Now it's carte blanche. I can yeah. do whatever I want. And now I'm just like, if you didn't have a good time, good luck complaining. Yeah. You can just say the cancer girl made you mad. Yeah, no, you, it's as close as you're ever gonna get to being like, be, to having the book <laughs> opened as uh, in terms of material you can talk about as like, say, a trans man or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's as close as you're ever gonna get to <laughs> like trans man, trans man, man to a trans, trans person man. in general. Yeah, where you just and I, you know, I'm not I'm just throwing trans out there, but you know, you know what I mean. Like the more yeah. diverse you are, well, the because more because people do not want to pretend like they don't. The like more diverse the you are, the say. more things you can talk about. Yeah, you know, yeah, openly I, whatever. Like, remember how many times did we watch? like black male comedians do 30 minutes on Asians. Yeah. And we're like, so you can do, okay, so you're like. And have an Asian accent yeah. and be like super racist. Yeah. And you're like, oh, so you don't, so as long as you, as long as you've got a little cover, yeah. it covers you for everything. Yeah. Like I was like, Cancer this is, is amazing. My cover. The co- like you can be a black guy and talk about like, like fucking how dumb you think Asian women are. Yeah. And you're like, I what? You can do that? Yeah. As long as you got one, 
then you can do all of it. Yeah. And I was like, that's so great. And cancer is that blanket where yeah. now you can talk about anything. And they'll be like, well, I guess you got to let her do it. Yeah. She's not just a white lady anymore. She's dying. You know, there's no <laughs> cancer Karens. We can't call her cancer Karen. You know, oh, she's just whining. I have cancer. I'm allowed to whine and bitch. <laughs> I'm allowed to bitch and whine. Then you got a port? How, what, yeah. is a, what is a port? Right here. You can't see it right now because it's got a Band-Aid on it. It's like a, it's like a big, long like line that goes into a vein inside, like right oh. behind my heart. So it's so wow. because like chemo, if you just keep putting it in your arm, you'll destroy those veins. Mm. But this is a bigger, thicker okay. vein. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's robust. And so they like put, you're they have mainlining, mainlining it. chemo. So yeah, I've got like chemo oh, through okay. your neck. Like this thing, they cut through, like they freeze you, mm-hmm. and then they cu- cut you open, go through your neck, and then they're like, you're going to feel some pressure, and then I felt pressure, and then my ears started to itch. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Am I turning into a dog? It didn't hurt. It just felt odd. That's so weird. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> okay for some reason i thought it was like the, you know like you have it and now you can like press a button and get chemo you don't have to like go to the yeah. clinic but it's like you still gotta go yeah okay they had one of my favorite like types of nurses is like usually and it's usually a male like an older male nurse they'll be like this but he's on he's got jokes he's got everything and he's trying to make you laugh because that's what he does mm-hmm. and he doesn't know that i'm a comedian so he's telling me all these jokes and all this stuff and i was <laughs> like he's telling me how like you sometimes we'll get people here that are on like super painkillers so they're very like constipated and backed up and i started telling this lady some jokes and all of a sudden she just about shit the bed <laughs> I was like, so you're human pu- prune juice. Like, you and he's like, why does this bitch have jokes? <laughs> he's like, hey, I have the jokes here. Hey, let me tell the jokes. Yeah, he didn't know. I was. It's cute. I love when it's like yeah. they don't know that, that you do that job mm-hmm. and they're just going. And it's he was making me laugh. He and was as a fun. comedian, you're like, how many times have you told that story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like. How do you know? Yeah, well, I How know. How do you know that I've told the shit the bed story since never, 1994? I would never. It's my closer. I would never ruin that for him because no, that's his thing it. and he loves it. He loves making people that are sick laugh, which is nice. Yeah. But yeah. I, I giggled a little bit. I didn't like give him too much. So. Yeah, I don't get it. Don't go over the top. Like, I think Make he, him earn he it. He didn't kill with me. No, but. <laughs> he's fucking, he's okay. He killed with the lady that shit on the, on the bed. Yeah, there's, yeah. I, get, I've ne- I haven't been into the cross. Like I used to drive the cr- my, Oh, no, we lost video. My God. No. No, they can't even see me. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Does anybody watch this? We'll just put up. weird. Just guys. There's a couple creepy guys, I bet, that watch this. Probably. With the sound off. (laughs) They're like, I do not want to hear that fucking guy talk. I love when she laughs so loud. Her mouth is open so wide. Yeah, they just watch it like this. (laughs) (laughs) They just have one hand on the laptop on the left-hand side. (laughs) <laughs> covering my face and body <laughs> and just stare at you with the sound off. <laughs> kind of gross. Men are gross. Men are kind of creepy and weird. Men are kind of creepy and weird. But it's but good whatever. to do the podcast again. We could do enough. We should do more, yeah, I we'll guess. Do more. Right? We'll try it's and not do that this hard. weekly. I don't think like uh cuz I've been talking to my brother and he's like cuz he's I'm now going on the same chemo path as it's kind of been nice <laughs> that my brother has gone through all this before me Yeah. cuz I can ask him questions and then like Cause there's so many people. Oh, that's the one thing about this is like you get so many messages from people who are just like, uh, like just being. Because mm-hmm. everybody, w- I had this really great talk with my doctor because everybody, like my brother's, like you need to stop drinking alcohol altogether. You need to stop eating sugar altogether. And I'm like, if I literally only have a few years left of my life, I'm not doing that. Like I'm not. And I had a discussion with her where she was like, yeah, like, like live your life, like live your life. I, she's like, I have lots of patients that pay money to go to Mexico for these weird treatments and then they go off to the Mayo Clinic and the Mayo Clinic's what are you doing here you live in Edmonton and the cross cancer is one of the best cancer facilities in the world like Mm -hmm. and it's just all this chasing and having to be in control of everything instead of like living your fucking life and like I've told people like there's it's not like at first it's kind of hard to hear but then you're like wait a second I know that my life is ending even though we're all gonna have our lives over at one point like so i know that i have to do stuff that i've always wanted to do and i know that i have to get some shit done but Mm -hmm. like and i think that's kind of a cool thing about having something like cancer yeah but 
I'm yeah, just like not of. gonna like run around looking for a cure. Everyone's sending me, me eat bee pollen, eat this, and I'm not, and I don't want anybody that sent me one of those messages to feel bad because I appreciate all of them and I do look into all of it. And it's always the same people, right? It's like well, you could take trace it back to COVID. Yeah. Right, the anti-vax people oh, are one also anti-Western medicine. Anti- because of the vaccine. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I thought there would just be more people that were like, you know, uh, take the Rick Sampson oil, go to Mexico, yeah. do the thing, yeah. do the bee pollen or whatever. Don't do chemo. That's what's killing yeah, you. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm like, you know, I'm sorry. Like I'm going to trust medicine. Sorry. Well, sorry. and like we had that conversation where it's like a lot of people who are online saying like. I beat me? cancer yeah. with cannabis and a little bit of this and some exercise. And, and it's like, and then you talk to their family and friends and they're oh like, no, they did chemo. and chemo. Yeah. They also did chemo. Yeah. Like, mostly yeah. You think that if like the bee chemo. pollen cured like they cancer, quietly, they fucking low key take chemo and then yeah. say that they were cured by whatever the fuck. But if you fuck. think that like bee pollen or cannabis fully cured cancer that the pharmaceutical industry wouldn't have monetized it by now. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. How, yeah. how like, would we, how would we not know? That's bullshit. How would we not know? And I know they're like, Oh no, they're keeping cancer out there to make money off of it. I'm like, yes. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. That's the things you hear. It, so I just want to hear messages of like, yeah, let's go out and hang out one night. Like, I just want to have fun. I literally just want to have fun. I want to mm. do comedy tours with comics that I enjoy touring with. Like, I just want to ha- like have a good time. I don't. And if it go, if chemo goes well, great. Then great. Yeah. Then I'm not paying you your GoFundMe money back. No, <laughs> you're not getting it back. That's my fucking that's, money. That's my. Well, uh, now your fundraiser, you brought that up, and people are like. Spend it. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Fuck you. Never give it back. That's the thing too, is you find out from other people that like I like really literally like was overwhelmed when they when I saw what people were donating and doing. I was just like, this is fucking insane. Like this is insane. Mm. I usually donate as uh, anonymous Lacombe. I know. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. That's the best. <laughs> Or, sh- or Sean Lanonymous. <laughs> Sean Lanonymous. <laughs> Anonymous Lacombe. You're like, I think I know who the fuck that is. <laughs> Shane yeah. Lacrombie. But it's, I, I literally, I'm like, I'm kind of relieved that I know how I'm going to die because nobody knows, not everyone knows how they're going to die. So it's kind of like, you can't, yeah. if you're, if you get hit by a bus tomorrow, you couldn't have had a GoFundMe started mine for will you. Be Just mine, for your sons. Mine will be what they call the short goodbye. The short It'll <laughs> be like an angina yeah, attack as I'm opening a door. That, uh, I'm trying to open a jar of pickles and then, oh, yeah. something popped. Yeah. And it wasn't the pickles. <laughs> and then I'll be like, let's get a GoFundMe going. And <laughs> and dead. But you said that like, if you got it, you wouldn't tell anybody. Yeah, I probably, yeah. I probably, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Because w- w- in, in, you, until you have it, maybe maybe if I got it, I'd be like, you know what? I actually do need support. Yeah. I actually, yeah, I yeah, do yeah, need, yeah. I do need to tell, I do need to tell people. I yeah. do need help. I do need, you know. And I, your I, cancer jokes would be amazing. And also, I, yeah. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I, I don't think I could not tell people. It's too, it's too, I don't it's know too if hard. I could. And it's also too, like, it'll, it'll make people around you angry when they find out that you were that sick and you didn't tell them it'll make people angry. yeah i don't i think i'm pretending that I'd, I'd be stronger than i like i think i'll be like i'll tell everybody immediately yeah yeah i don't He's think like, i'll be you look great. Have you yeah. been exercising? no not at all i've been exercising 12 years <laughs> let me <laughs> tell you a story you've been losing weight it's the cancer's eating my it's back it's ozempic <laughs> i'm on ozempic but i've been on it forever <laughs> I'm one of the new ones. It new is convert. weird that people will be like, I had just one person say it, but yeah, they're, you, oh, you, I bet you're back say it, bet you got it from the vaccine. And I was like, oh hey, my God. Um, no, because I thought you my guys were stuck on heart. Wasn't diagnosed, it a heart problem? Oh, I know. My brother was diagnosed at the beginning of COVID. That's when he found out about his. And then my doctor said that that's because of the size of my tumor, it's probably growing there for like five to 10 years already. Like, yeah. It's probably the hepatitis vaccine. vaccine. Yeah. But they just but yeah. they're just they're consistent, right? They're c- they've been consistent throughout the pandemic and now they've got to find some yeah. other thing to latch on to, some other yeah. vine to but like I was doing I started to doing a joke recently about like how um, you know, how everybody's so boring. Yeah. Because once you know what they think about one thing, you know what they think about everything, everything. and everybody's the same where yeah. it's like you tell me one thing about what you think about something and I know now because of how tribal we are, I know how you feel about everything. almost every fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. Like nobody ever says like, I don't like uh, Pride Nights because they're grooming our kids. But also, COVID was a legitimate public health threat <laughs> that we handled as best as we could. Yeah, never. Like that would be interesting yeah. to hear somebody say that. No one does. No it's one. It's all like 
fucking you're either one side or the other. No one everything. says that, but I think a lot of people think that way, but they just don't want to like, like so we watched Scott Thompson at Grindstone Comedy Fest. He had like he has this new show called uh, King and uh, it is fucking amazing. And it was so good. And it was so like he went after stuff that everyone's too scared to go after. But he's literally like, I'm so he's done. He's like, I'm exhausted of all of this. And he brings up everything has a great point. And he thought that, like, everyone was going to hate it. When he came in that weekend, it was crazy seeing what he was like when he came in and what he was like when he left. Because when he came in, he was very, like, I don't know. I don't know explain it. But he was just, like, nervous and he worried, like, very yeah, ho- very holding in and blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm going to bomb. And everybody's like, you're Scott he's like, Thompson, they're gonna you're a kid in the hall. And he's me. like, I don't no. think you understand. He's like, they're going to hate me for all these jokes. And I was ex- expecting to hear, like, just horrific. But it was, like, everything that he said made absolute my favorite jokey to all was that he's like it was about drags drag queens reading to kids he's like i don't understand why this is the hill people want to die on like drag queens don't like kids and the only time <laughs> the only time children should be around drag queens is when they're looking for coke <laughs> it was such a good joke it was such a good joke and yeah. it didn't hurt anyone it yeah. just discussed stuff and the, yeah. and the way he ends the show i don't want to ruin it for anybody that might see in the future because i told him this show is going to be a good, like I hope somebody throws this somewhere good because it was so good. But yeah, watching him and then he got three standing ovations every single show. He got a full standing wow. ovation. And I'm like, I've never seen that at a comedy festival ever. Not really. No. Not like even, even from like the biggest crushes. comics. Yeah. Nobody even gets standing crushes, ovations. I never like, see that. You know, just woo. Every single show he got one. And it was it was so good. It, w- it yeah, was at the Grindstone. Demo. It was yeah, at Grindstone. It's like very liberal. It's everybody. It's very navel gazy. Very. Yeah, like, I mean, it's you know those environments tend to be like, how am I being perceived? Yeah. Right? Like it's like, so it is harder to do comedy in those environments because yeah. there's no guttural instant reaction. But everybody was the laughing. crowd is generally filled with people who are like. How will my laughter at this yeah. moment be perceived by my peer And it was group? light out. You could see everybody. It wasn't. It was outside. It was light out. And I was. I didn't watch the show once. I watched the audience every single show, and it was fun. Like I saw one group of like lesbians that were like super into it, and then he said something a little bit against Shade. lesbians, and they were kind of like. Mm. Eh. But then they were like laughing again, and at the end of the show, they wanted a picture with him, and I'm like. I said to him, I'm like, you're saying what everybody would love to be able to just talk about, but we're also scared that we're going to get offended. We're going to offend someone and someone's going to call us horrible things for just having different feelings and thoughts. Like, it was so good. It reminds I was, me of like, you know, Patrice O'Neill when he came to Edmonton and yeah, like, there was that fuck. there was that one statement he made where like he would all of a sudden he would say some stuff that would upset women. Yeah. And then he'd be like and then he would just pause for like a minute. And then he just go, you feel that? You feel that tension? You feel that tension in here? And everybody's like, yeah, I fucking absolutely <laughs> feel the tension in here. He's like, that's good. Yeah. That's fucking good, man. He's like, this is a real comedy show. Yeah. He's like, you build something up and it fucking derails and then you keep going. He's like, yeah. it, when you come into a show and it's all laughs, 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 that's fucking bullshit. It's boring. And the crowd's like, yeah. You know, they d- and then they d- got back on board. They're like, yeah, yeah he's right. If you come to a show and it's just like, ha, 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 then what have you really done? What is it? It's yeah. just some fuck. Anybody can do that. And yeah. I think that, you know, guys like that are that skilled, like Scott Thompson or Patrice, like they're like, I've been given this gift and it's not just to come in here and do what any fucking comedian can do. Like any comedian, any fucking once you've done comedy long enough, you know, it's a magic trick, right? Yeah. It's like anybody can come in and do it. Anybody could come in and just kind of take six months, watch people do stuff and then okay i figured it out out. i figured it out i know how to make people laugh but yeah when your guys like when when it's like scott or whatever like it's like you know he feels maybe some pressure to be like i'm so good i can't just go up there and like hey everybody and be the damsel and everybody like that's the guy i remember from kids in the hall he's like no i'm gonna take some chances but he also didn't do it as scott thompson he did as buddy cole which i think is the best way to do it he's like this isn't scott thompson saying this shit this is a fictional character that you all love saying this shit. And I mm. think it was easier for people to swallow it that way. But fuck, was it good to watch. I was so inspired by it. Like, I was just like, and he's such a wonderful human being. Like, I I Those barely talked to any of the other comics because I was just enjoying having fun with him that weekend. He was just such a wonderful person. So Those yeah. guys are pretty real, you know? Like, I, when I worked with Kevin McDonald, like you said, Scott Thompson. Yeah. Scott Thompson. Yeah. Like, if you can't rest on your laurels, yeah. nobody can. 
And he's like, oh, my God, I might bomb. I might, this yeah. might be a failure. I'm scared. Yeah. Like, when I worked in Calgary with Kevin McDonald, he was like, no, you don't understand. I was like, well, you're Kevin McDonald. Like, like he's, he's like, and he's like, hero. Yeah. he's like, you don't understand. Like, th- this could go brutal. Like, if I don't do well. He was, like, so scared. And yeah. I'm like, oh, my God, these, this is the ki- these are the kids in the hall. And they're not like, hi. You know, like, a lot of people would be yeah. like, hi, it's me, legendary, whatever, right? But, but they he was feel just the like, pressure to always be really good because everyone loved them so much. Yeah, or like, despite all their successes, they still yeah. have like low self esteem yeah. and they're still like scared oh. and you know. I like know, it's fucking nuts. It's fucking nuts. But it, yeah, that was I don't know. It was so it was so fun watching all of that and watching him be so br- bluntly. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And he he told us too. He also told the people like like during the show, the Amazon show that they got, like they were terrible to them. They were so terrible to them. Really? He wrote 10 monologues for the show, and they also said, we don't want you to do monologues. We just don't think it's a thing. I'm like, that's one of the things that the ki- made the kids in the hall great we were just their don't monologues. don't think it's a thing. And, but they had to put, because of nowadays, because of you don't want to offend anybody, so they had to run his monologues through GLAAD, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance. Oh, my And GLAAD God. rejected eight oh. of his 10 monologues. GLAAD rejected a gay man's work wow. because they f- they didn't think it, they it was they w- they were fa- like and he's, he's only like, he's only got one plate spinning he's right? like and like it's so all these liberal white women like he went after liberal because he's right it's all these liberal white women that think that they're doing so much and helping mm-hmm. so much and all this other stuff and like but they're not they're actually making the world a worse place yeah but i when he told me that glad rejected eight i was just I was like, that's disgusting. They're supposed to be there for you. They're not supposed to be there to hold you down and hold you back. Like, that's Mm -hmm. fucking gross. That's like, the world's fucked right now. So, like, say whatever you want. That's all I'm... But like I said, he's only got one plate spinning. He's yeah. a gay ma- He's a white yeah. man who's gay, yeah. and that's only one plate moving. You gotta have. Oh, that's not enough. Even you gotta anymore. have two or three spinning. Right? Even like he was talking about, he's like, nobody cares about gay white men. Nobody no. cares about. You or even gay men in general. You gotta like have if you're a gay man. So they don't even when they're reading his stuff, they're not like reading it as a. This is a gay man who wrote this, and yeah. so we cut him some slack because he's a part of our community. They're yeah. like, this is a white guy who wrote this. Yeah. So keep yeah. that in mind. Isn't that fucking and So he nuts? gets kind of pigeonholed into that. And it's yeah. like, and I'm sure like you've told me before, Scott's like, I was out in the fucking, I- you know, like 80s in Toronto I mean, when, when you could get beat the fuck up for nobody, walking the street, holding yeah, another man's hand. Nobody was a hero for being gay then. No, nope. I was just vilified. And if I walked in the wrong neighborhood, look out. Yeah. And he talks about like AIDS and how AIDS came along and just wiped out half of his. Uh, hmm. a whole group and everything wow. and like it was so good i like if you have a chance like he's in la right now but i know he's gonna tour it more because it was it was really 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 good hmm. w- but it's just like nowadays like how you can't release anything anymore because everybody is so scared of getting sued or getting uh losing yeah, like if scott thompson of kids in the hall of fame can't do it like who can yeah do it? like that's i think there's going to be a crazy shift because of the writer strike, because the actors are striking, because everybody's being a lot more transparent than ever before. Like with the whole, like I used to think if you were on TV, you were rich. When I watched Mike McDonald on Just for Last, I'm like, he's got to be rich. He's got to live in a mansion in Toronto, this and that. I remember the first time I saw myself on a TV was for the Winnipeg Comedy You're Fest. Like, How come that girl's not rich? Right. I was sitting in a bar and I literally had no money, like mm. none. And I'm like, I got what I wanted, and now I still. I still can't live a good life. Like, I'm not, like, it's so, so many people are, like, even actors are, like, you think that, like, that there's, we're all making millions of dollars. No, there's, like, a few elite people, but when, also, they'll make that much money, but then they have to pay out their agent and manager and all these other people who run around saying that they work for them, but, like, what Mm. do they really do? The birthplace of (laughs) anti-Semitism. (laughs) <laughs> showbiz <laughs> it's cra- it's v- i love watching all this because there's so many people like like talking about like what their real experiences and like just being like by the way um i was a co-star as i was a female co-star with this male co-star and i made literally scale well he made millions of dollars and when i asked and i won an emmy and he didn't and i still way made way less than him it's fucking crazy hmm. people ask me about comedy too they're like well you guys must make a lot in comedy. I'm like, no, we do not. We do not make a lot in comedy. Like, it does not. 
like even if you're at a high level you're still in canada at least maybe if you get to the states but that's when you get a yeah. manager that books stuff for you and they book you high because they want their cut of it right like like who would be the richest female stand-up comedian in canada in canada oh my god i have no the idea. wealthiest female stand-up comedian they would have in forty thousand dollars <laughs> that's wealthy because like guys, you could say, well, Jerry D, Brent Butt, these are millionaires, right? I mean, Jerry D's a millionaire, Brent Butt's a millionaire. Yeah. Who else is a millionaire? You can sort of name five or six male stand-up millionaires. Yeah, but not females. Um, Steve Patterson would be, you know, well known and flush. Like yeah. there'd be some. And I they're, think and Lisa they're all Baker's very good. doing good for herself, not millionaire-wise, but she because she does it all herself. She doesn't like. Mm -hmm. She goes after and she gets her own money and like but i'm not saying but i just mean you'd think that there would be like at least a one few female yeah. comedian millionaires in canada but i don't know it'd be like deb de giovanni but she's in la Nikki yeah. Payne, but she sort of does it when she feels like yeah. it like stand-up comedians i can't think of like if one. Nikki Payne was a grinder she'd she'd have tons of money because yeah. she's very well known and awesome but she also doesn't want to yeah she doesn't want to and i don't blame her but there's not many. You're no. right. There is kind of a I weird. I can't think of a female stand up that has gotten her own show in Canada. I guess it'd be like, you know, Sabrina Jalise like or something. She never got her own, like a Jerry D style show, like Mr. Yeah. D or like yeah. the Letterkenny stuff. Like, I can't think of a female comedian. Who'd Jan they? Arden has, but Jan yeah. Arden's a musician. Yeah. Like, it's, cr it's, it's, I'm not. Yeah, there's no corner gas that. A female comedian came up with her, a Mr. D. No. Yeah, there really is. There weren't even female comedians. I don't think any of the women on Corner Gas were stand up comedians. They were all just like sketch people. Yeah. I think the timing it was terrible, where like there was a period of time where it was like, okay, we'll give a couple Canadians a chance, and it was sort of Mr. D and Corner Gas. And the yeah. And now we're in a time where you would think more females would be getting but opportunities. But Nikki Payne should have had her own Mr. But D style show. They're not show. Do, they don't do stuff like that anymore. No. They just don't do stuff like that anymore. They don't have a uh, division at any of these places where they're like, we need more c original Canadian content. Yeah, no, they like don't. they're just not doing it. No. And now um, with all these strikes, we're just going to get so much crazy reality show. Have you heard there's like a golden bachelor? He's 71. Oh, gross. <laughs> what? <laughs> his, oh. his name is like Jerry or Gary. And oh, he's 70. He, he looks like he's 60. Of course. Of course. He looks. It wouldn't be like my dad in a wheelchair with one no, eye. No, like, I'm just excited. I take the see. girl with tits. <laughs> Like my dad recently, there was a lady came by for an assessment, and she and then and they're like, "Well, do you need a daily bath?" And he's <laughs> like, "Maybe if she's eighteen or 19. And I'm like, "You're seven. Let me let me remind you something. You're seventy two. Yeah. But like his jokes are still, you know, if, she's, if she's young enough. That's or whatever, because like, men you know. always think that they can get a nineteen year old. Well, but also my dad was one of the only guys that was getting puss because he had his filter set because to he was one of the older only women. Guys. Yeah. No, he was the one of the only guys that had his filter set to an older really? woman. Really? Yeah. So like he was like when he was sixty five, he was like, Yeah, I'll fuck a seventy two year old. I was in And then they were like, Oh my god, a sixty five year old man just messaged me. Like, you know, if you're a seventy two year old woman and you get messaged by a younger man, yeah. you're like, Holy shit. Yeah. Like this never happens. Yeah. Everybody who reaches out to me is ninety two. I went out with like a 68 year old guy in Vancouver once from Tinder because I set my preferences because I was like, let's see what's out there. And let's he was see what's available. And he was like, he was pretty wealthy and stuff. But we both were like, this isn't where we like each other as people, but this would never work romantically. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, let's see what it was would be like. And it was, <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. I don't know how some people do it. And he, t he just want a waste of one pill. That's all. <laughs> I'm sure he took a pre. I'm sure he took a pill before. For sure he took a pill. I don't think so. I don't think you. Well, he had money, so maybe he did. But I don't like if you. I don't like. It's like, are you sponge worthy? Are you pill worthy? Ah. Uh, are you pill one of these worthy? Exactly. Fifty dollar yeah. pills. Yeah. I guess you can find out early in the evening. You can spend the first 15 minutes and, and be like, we have bathroom. a good chemistry and then go to the bathroom and take a pill. <laughs> I did a show for like some car dealership in like Gibbons or something, one of those towns. And <laughs> there was like, I did it with Kelly Saladuka and he, Kelly was dying because all these like old male car salesmen were coming up and hitting on me. They were like 60 something and they were like, yeah. one of them goes on to me like, I took a Cialis. <laughs> I was like, that's the grossest thing <laughs> Yeah, and I'm fake hard. <laughs> I'm fake hard. I'm science hard. Oh my god! I'm not Mother Nature hard for you. I'm science hard for yeah. you. Yeah. I want to. You want to fuck science? No. <laughs> I don't want to fuck a science experiment. You weird leaky volcano. <laughs> you weird sickening leaky volcano. I think I'll leave my dick bong for you in my will. Okay. That'll I'll take good. it. 
It's That's a good bad. bong. I think we've talked. We've this has been a. It's th- been a long one. Yeah, which is fine. We it's did, okay, yeah. but we'll do it again. We could next even do week. a two part, or maybe, or we'll just do it again next week. We'll do it again next week when we get high. We'll we keep didn't even doing get high it. For this one. Yeah, we didn't even get high for this. We didn't one. even That's get ridiculous. high. I got a whole I got a whole care package from Joey in Toronto. Uh, she used to run Underground Clandestiny, so she sent me all these cookies. So I'll bring really? some cookies. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's not bad. Yeah. People well, are being so nice. That's good. <laughs> People are it. being really nice. Well, we nice. were talking about that too in Winnipeg, where it's like you know th- this is the comeuppance for a life of like you're either like if you're kind of a shitty person, you're GoFundMe. F- Fizzles <laughs> at about might get up to four or five G's of like, <laughs> and then be people are like, ah, he was actually kind of a prick. <laughs> like your GoFundMe is a direct reflection of the impact you had on people's life. Like if people are like, I really enjoyed spending time with that person. I'm going to help them out. You know? <laughs> yeah. And so you, yeah, because your your GoFundMe surpassed a lot of people who are like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like fucking that person was kind of shit. I may not have ever won a Canadian Comedy Award, and also, but you, I think and, I won the. Gold and you Award also movies. toured a lot. Yeah, that's the thing. I right? also is like, like you I've know a lot up, yeah, of I know people. Everybody you know, like you know yeah. way more people than me in comedy. Like yeah. I kind of just done Alberta and like Toronto fifteen years ago. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vanc- it's never worth it to go anywhere. F- but you, uh, you're always like, I got a tour. Yeah. So there's all these people that know you coast to coast. Yeah. That are like Kathleen. That's helpful too. I'll give her a buck or two. <laughs> I'll give her one dollar. I'm appreciative of all of it. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> crazy. I won't turn down anything. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. Small donation, small dollar. <laughs> You're a small dollar lady. <laughs> it's called small dollar donating or some shit. I heard about it with politics. Like, yeah, I like don't know. Trump, donating $2? Trump is like a small dollar donation oh. politician because oh. all the establishment money goes to the other phonies like but it's Ron all like DeSantis. The 10 and $20 but he is the, he's a small dollar guy. He's yeah. the, fuck the Trump supporters that whenever they have an extra two bucks, they throw it down on Trump. Yeah. That's you. I'm Trump. <laughs> I'm the Trump of Canadian I'm comedy. The Donald Trump. <laughs> oh well. Well, thanks. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for being on your podcast thanks again. Being on thanks for doing it again. I don't know what episode this is. Who knows? We'll just keep going. Yeah, we'll just keep doing <laughs> it. You know. I mean, this week I feel bad because I was like, fu- I, I literally I was at my kitchen like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's seven thirty. Like, I was at my oven cutting peppers, <laughs> and I'm like. Just going to make a little dinner. And what am I forgetting? <laughs> and then it just fucking imme- like, oh, fuck. <laughs> what time is it? 735. What time was I supposed to be there? 730. <laughs> oh, my God. You're worth waiting around for. And then my family's like, where are you going? You're going to just cut a pepper and leave? I'm like, I got to get out of here. <laughs> and then yeah, my wife was like, do, are, do they, are they still doing it? I'm like, I'm just going to I'll drive and then they can cancel while I'm driving. <laughs> And then as soon as you get to that 109th shit, you're yeah. like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, I should have been here 15 fucking minutes the ago. The traffic is so dumb And there. I did, like, one of the... A- I don't know if this is asshole, but, like, everybody... There's, like, two lanes, right? Because one of them's closed. Yeah. And then people started, like, filtering into the third one. And, and after that happened, like, four times, and every light would change, and then three cars would move. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not letting this happen. So then yeah. I pulled out into that lane and stayed there so that people were, like, stuck behind me I if they tried... It. And I'm like, fuck this. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not letting this happen. Um, but people were like honking at me. And I'm like, what did you think? You thought you could just fucking bust up past all of us? Yeah, like, fuck, fuck, you. fuck you. Fuck you. I got a podcast. I got a podcast. <laughs> I got a podcast. I'm trying to get to a podcast. <laughs> I've got a po- I've got an emergency podcast. Well, our listener will be happy we're back. Do we? Who was our Dick. listener? Dick. Yeah, we got Dick. He's gone. No, Dick will come back. You think Dick will come back? Dick will always come back. Dick Dick always comes back. Dick always comes back. Dick can't stay away. (laughs) Dick can't stay away. (laughs) Dick will stick. We didn't even get a scratchy ticket. That's okay. We'll do it next week. Well, at least you've given up on something. (laughs) You know, we don't have any hope for that anymore. We. I bet you. I bet you. We've saved people money. Probably. That would have done scra- been scratchy people. But they're like, like, wow, they proved that that is. They really lost every fucking week. For yeah. two years, yeah. they lost money. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. Thanks for being on your podcast. We'll see you next week. <laughs> see Thanks you next for listening. Thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>